Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Guidance with Patricia, and I'm Patricia. I was kind of lost in thought there listening to, um, to my opener um, and how exciting um, it is to be able to sit here and to share with everybody around the world um, and to hear the excitement uh, in preparation for that opener. And to feel that excitement now, too, it's almost a year, and I'm still excited. Um, so, wow, when you're doing what you truly, truly feel in your heart and soul, um, there's just nothing that compares with it. There's no, um, no other way to be than who you are. And... You know, it's exciting to be who you are, wherever you are, uh, no matter what you're doing, no matter who you're around. Um, that's exciting. And I do that. And I thought it was a normal way to be until I'm around other people and I see that um, some sadness you can feel it in their eyes. You can see it in your lack of smiling, you can feel it, how they move um, and do their chores if that's a storekeeper or cashier or you can just see and feel when somebody is right there. Um, and it's not always fun. I mean, it's not always fun, but it is. And when you can value your whole being, and you, and you honestly know that it's okay um, to make what society or other people or even yourself feel uh, on mistakes. Call them hiccups. It's okay to hiccup. Just don't puke all over the place. Just hiccup and do what you need to do to get rid of the hiccups. So yeah, I'm Patricia. I am me. Uh, have a lot of flaws. <laughs> uh, I'm. I honor the flaws that I have. It didn't always uh, go well with me. With that, it's a, it's a process. It takes time. Sometimes it doesn't take time. Sometimes it just takes the hard choices and the hard knocks. As a little girl, I didn't trust those big people very much. Mm -mm -mm. And I moved around a lot. So building trust was not something that um, was granted or given. Uh, that has taken a very long process. 
but I trusted spirit because I could see and hear and communicate. And I trusted them. And my insecurities in the physical led me to have a stronger bond uh, with spirit. And I'm sure there are other people that have gone through similar, where that bond with spirit is so much stronger than your bond with um, other people. Um, and it's almost like I felt all the time I was walking in two different, two different ways. Um, I tried to bring my spiritual soul smile. Oh, wow, this is so amazing. Look at this. And I just felt that a lot of people kind of just went through life taking a lot of things for granted. That the small little things, you know, why is it that we kind of, worship or love the sunrise when we're 30 or 40 or 50. <laughs> Why didn't we enjoy the sunrise when we were 9, 20, 11? Because there's just so much going on in life. There's so much happening in form, in the physical. It's nobody's fault. It's not a blame. It's, it's, it's nothing like that. I hope I'm not coming across that way at all. I can only validate um, change, improve my being. Um, I can't do that for anyone else. And no one else certainly can do that for me. But why is it? There's a lot of things in form that happen and take place. Absolutely, there is. But one thing that's not changed for me, and I'm 56, uh, since I was little, is if the amazement, the amazement of how spirit works in and through everything everything and I see it and I catch it and sometimes it's fleeting and fast and quick sometimes it's like oh yeah I can see what spirit's doing here and they don't say anything um wouldn't it be wonderful if we lived in a world where everyone was connected consciously with no transparency to all that they are informed and you could say, yeah, look, look, look what Spirit's doing there. And I could say, church, ha ha, I see what Spirit's doing with you. Um, I can see your whole energy change, Trish. Wow, I can feel that. What are you tapping into, George? What? Michelle, really? Wow, that is amazing. That's something I've never heard of. I've never experienced but I get to know that through you, Michelle. Thanks, awesome. Or we could openly and transparently communicate about our, our indifferences, our choices, who we are, what we'd like to fix or change or grow in, remember. That is, to me, a passion of living, a passion of being. I have no fear of being wrong. I have no fear of not knowing what someone else knows. For me, exactly, it's the opposite. I, I'm kind of nosy. And I'm kind of excited. Wow. Um, because I truly do see um, the oneness. I, I That word is so overused. It's like Reiki and chakras. So I kind of shy away from certain words when I see that they've just been overplayed, redundant, um, kind of lost their shine and sparkle. 
Because have you ever noticed that the more open you are to spirit and to people and the things around you, how the very special words, like for me, there are sacred words and sacred words would be spirit. That's, that's, that's like, whoa, um, soul, um, creator, God, um, chi, balance, energy. And, and have you ever noticed that after a period of time that those words kind of get blended in together they kind of all go towards explaining something that each one has been thrown into a pot and meld it together and that beautiful ting of reiki is kind of molded in with a boom 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 of balance and it becomes a melting pot. And the energy of it, the deity of it, the true divine purpose of it kind of melds in with other things. And yeah, and Trish, really, let's get real. How could you go around and go, Reiki, balance, and, and give that energy when communicating? That's not exactly what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, they're used as words to fit in. They're used as vibrations, like, um, I understand spirit. Yeah, I, I, I teach Reiki. Uh, it, they're used in a way um, for acceptance and not allowance. And I've been guilty of this myself and pulled up on it pretty quickly. In, in a lot of ways, spirit will project what we're familiar with, but boy, have I ever been warned, Patricia, don't project at me. Don't do it. What does that mean exactly? And am I even on topic to my show today? Hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> So where was I? Yes, melding in together. Be who you are, where you are, with whoever you are with. That's a hard one. How do we do that? What could come up to stop that or to allow that? I guess we'll find out when we come back from my first break. Thank you. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back to Divine Guidance with Patricia. Um, if you want to drop me an email or, or have a chat or uh, look up some of my services, you can go to my website. It is divineguidance.earth, E-A-R-T-H, uh, and send me an email uh, or uh, uh, take a look and see if there's anything that you like. Um, so... Before the break, we were going, I was going uh, on about <laughs> um, what would stop us from being who we are, where we are, with whomever we're with. What could possibly stop that? Or what could allow it? So this topic of the show today is self-will versus divine will. Is it that simple? Well, no. Not for me. <laughs> it's definitely not for me. And one of my gifts is divine action. So it should be absolutely, really easy. And, and you know what? About I would say about 89% or almost to 90, 92%. Uh, if you were to ask my husband, he would say that I follow it all the time. Um, because I do follow it quite strictly um but i want to get back to my insecurities in form leading me to be very bonded with spirit and my soul um 
and not having anyone informed actually communicate what was happening and having a lot of I'll just say horrific experiences um, all the way through, um, which actually uh, really brought forward so much quicker um, the fear, the physical, um, and how not to be in fear. So I'm very grateful for those experiences. So I do not in any way wish any type of Oh, poor Trish. No. Um, everything takes place. I wouldn't say that everything takes place. Like I'm not, I'm not really into this um, law of attraction. Maybe I don't understand it. Uh, and maybe I have a way of, of understanding it or perceiving it in a different way that just it doesn't jive with me. I don't fully um, align with what I put out there or will come back to me because um, let's face it, some of us put out some really great stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know what? In many different levels and ways, great stuff comes back in and through, but it may not be what we need or expect or would super value in the physical. Um, so I guess, you know, I'm getting into a different topic. We'll do that another day. Um, but yeah, thank you, Spirit, because I, uh, that gave me a whole different perspective on the law of attraction and how it might work. Okay, so self-will. What is self-will? Um, what do you feel self-will is? You know, take a minute. Um, the Spirit had me bring pen and paper work today um and to help bring this forward whatever it is the message that they're trying to bring out and i kind of put my ideas down and i went oh but that may not be what they want you ever think that you're going to go to a an event uh and in your mind it's going to be this and this and this and uh and then you meet up with one person and you have this deep connection deep conversation and you can just sit and see some miracles start to happen. And you wonder, wow, I'm so glad I went to that. I didn't want to. Right? <laughs> I say Patricia didn't want to go do that. Uh, but I felt deep within my being and I felt very strongly that I was to go. Uh, I'm not so egotistical to think that I was to go because of my presence only. Um, although sometimes it does work that way, that your presence is needed somewhere. Um, what you carry on an oversoul soul lo uh, levels, uh, they go with you. And if you're not conscious of it, it doesn't mean that they don't go with you, right? Like if you forget to uh, invite your soul and your oversoul, they're still going to hang around. They're going to come. So Sometimes it is just to have your presence there. Sometimes it is just to, um, many times, I think I've said it throughout my shows and, and I just want to give it a little bit more clarity is uh, I can be a grocery shopping and I'm asked by my spiritual teachers to communicate with this, this person, this lady, this man, this child. And I can see their soul and their spirit light up um even though the person's looking at me like yeah what do you want right and so i i still have to keep the conversation going and i don't know why uh, but then i see the huddle of their spiritual teachers and my spiritual teachers and that event that needed to go down um I don't ask, hey, what were you guys doing over there while I was talking to Myrtle? I don't. I just, okay. So, um, but I'm aware that there was an exchange there and I had absolutely nothing to do with physical, Patricia. Not my emotion, not my mental, well, my mouth, communication. So in those incidents, I, I, I be kind. I find something nice or something really neat about that person and and and. I start with that. It's funny because when I was into sales and stuff years ago, 
you know, you got to find something, really compliment them. And, and it felt really phony for a while because I'd always done that. And then I had to discern, no, I'm not doing it to be phony. I'm doing it to allow whatever to happen to go down. And I pick something that I genuinely think is neat. I don't just come up with something. I'm not making a sale. <laughs> um, and so that communication goes on. To me, that is divine will. That is me, Patricia, uh, feeling a little bit nervous about talking to this person, don't know what's going to take place, but knowing, knowing, knowing on my soul level and my heart level that whatever needs to transfer between those two groups of spiritual teachers, I'm the catalyst. Doesn't make me this divine guru or, you know, oh, I know because I know and she doesn't. No, none of that. It just be who you are, where you are, whoever you are around means allow my spirit and my soul to take their divine action when needed. And actually tapping into that. So how many people drive down the road? And maybe you do. <laughs> awesome. I want to say hi. Um, and you just, uh, you don't know why, but you know you've got to do something. And it's totally different. Let's say you were off on a 20-kilometer a drive, uh, but you realized, um, and you had to get there at a certain time, but you realized you really needed to pull over. You didn't want to. You wanted to get to your meeting. You wanted to get there when you were supposed to get there. And so many other factors just coming around that. But you stop. And you sit there. I've done this several times. That's why I talk about it. And I'm tapping my hands on the steering wheel. Yep. Okay. Here I am. That's not so bad as incident as when I go creator and I'll get this on here. This is just, I'm here. Yep. And nothing happens. <laughs> nothing happens. You know, no rainbows, no eagles, nothing falls from the sky. Somebody doesn't stop with a flat tire. I'm not in need. I don't need to help anybody do anything. I, uh, and then it just feels okay to pull off and keep going. Well, that's great. I'm late for my meeting by about 10 minutes here. Uh, and I know this and this and this is all going to go down. And I hit it when I get there. So what do I do? What do I do with that? Do I worry all the way to the... Sometimes I do. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little bit upset. Because I'm human. I'm Patricia. I'm not perfect. And I sometimes, and there's, there's still a, a, a teeter totter going on inside of me because of how I am. And that I honor and recognize or try my very best to honor and recognize every body that I have my conscious, my mental, my unconscious, my emotions, my spiritual, my soully, my oneness body. I might have left one out. <laughs> so, so what do I do with that experience? Well, you know, the first thing I might do is say, did I really get that? Yep, it was strong. It was really strong. Okay, so I bowed. Yeah. Uh, did I miss out on doing something? Was there something else I was supposed to do, like turn the radio on? Or did I, that's the next thing I go through. Did I do all that I was uh, needing to do at that moment. Uh, was I supposed to pray for somebody? Was I supposed to do anything that I didn't do? So I go over all the analyzation. But when you are connected to your whole beings and all your bodies and you're okay with that, it goes faster. All of this goes fa faster analyzing, whatever you want to call it, feeling it out, going deeper, so many different issues. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you sitting in that car, having that experience before uh, or pull out when you know it's time to pull out. I'm going to leave you during the break on what your routine or what you would go through on your way to the meeting after having that experience. So we'll be right back. Come back and join me. And let's take a look at where we're at driving to that meeting and why. Welcome back to Divine Guidance with Patricia. Yeah, I had to sit up my chair. I was kind of slumped over like that. So where are we? We're driving the car. We're on our way to this meeting that we know we're going to be late for. Um, and nothing has happened. Nothing spectacular by us pulling over and waiting five, ten minutes. Uh, wow. So did you feel that? Did you put yourself in those shoes that just not knowing how to feel what was going on for you when you didn't know were you okay with that or did it really feel uncomfortable for you i have to tell you there are times when it feels uncomfortable for me as well and then there are times it's like okay all right let me go to my meeting you know, and then um, come back home after my meeting, still nothing. You know, this little part of my being going, okay, all right, curiosity, what is it? What, you know, does that connect back to me being off the side there? I'm trying to connect up, trying to, trying to um, validate it in some way, trying to be okay with it in another way and trying to have some sort of excitement about oh yeah i remember the time i pulled off the road and nothing happened yeah um <laughs> and then you know sometimes you get validated sometimes on the way to the meeting there's an accident and that 10 seconds was needed for you to avoid that or you find out that um when you get to the meeting everybody's outside anyways because somebody forgot to get the key uh, many things can happen. It always happens. It's okay that it happens. So that's following divine guidance and not having a clue. So many times when some of us say, I know enough to know I know nothing, that kind of fits with that. Because a lot of times when I'm following my divine guidance, I don't know. I don't have any expectation. I don't direct it. I um, sometimes want to. Spirit knows how. But I don't. Uh, I have to trust and have faith that if I'm going to follow the divine will, which is will that I can keep Patricia out of the equation as much as possible. The Patricia that wants to block or control or is insecure or worries or is stressed and even the patricia that gets so super excited and just wants to go now and let's pull let's do it um it's not always a bad thing i mean sometimes you got to keep some of the positive patricia out of it as well so that it can just go and do as it needs to do so with me there's no up or down right or wrong it's a, and you know, following divine will is not um, being perfect by any means. It's not. Um, and I kind of chuckle at people who, oh, yes, I listened to spirit and I did this and I did that. Um, I kind of chuckle because it's also hard. It's also difficult. It's not an easy task. And yet, on most times, it can be the most, you don't even realize you've done it. Um, it's the diversity of life that intrigues me and the capability of being truthful about our diversity. Being truthful to know that, okay, I don't wear purple every Wednesday, um, but I could. And there could be a reason for that. 
But if I don't wear purple on Wednesday, it doesn't mean the reason that I had for wearing purple is no longer valid. I know, I'm talking circles. Full circle solutions. To know that you know nothing doesn't mean that you're dumb. It's not a cop out for not knowing so that you can have excuses for your behavior and non-behavior, your choices. To know that you know nothing is to know that you are capable of bridging fear, disappointment, frustration, hurt, and still taking divine action. You know, when you've been hurt because you've spoke out about spirit or your gifts, and, and you feel like you just don't want to step out again and do that because it, it, it was so hurtful. But you have your spiritual teachers kind of setting up little things and opportunities that trigger your heart and soul. And you just start sharing spirit and you go, <gasps> that's divine action, divine will. What is your pure will? What is it that you want to bring in form? What is it that you want to learn, remember, experience? And are you making those choices in self-will? Are you allowing divine will? Or are you also just so much in divine will that you can't make your own decisions up? Because that's the other spectrum. It's like, okay, spirit, throw my pendulum give me my answer spirit instead of consciously and going through all your bodies to make some of the choices and people do that and they do that because it's comfortable for them because they really want to do what their spirit and soul wishes as well it's an excellent tool to to align yourself into knowing or finding an answer um, from spirit you know there's many different tools and basic ways to do that some people draw some people write some people so as a creative person is there a certain type of people that will you know lean towards following divine will you know is it like religious people what well, one would think that they would follow divine will because they're very close to God and their understanding of a higher power. Does that make all religious people not being self-will? Um, what about a farmer? Farmer gets up. They probably doesn't want to get up at four o'clock in the morning when it's um, staging time. But he does. And he's really close to Mother Earth. He's always connected to the land or animals. What about a farmer? Maybe they don't ever get into self will. Or a spiritual person like me. Maybe I never get into self will. <laughs> yes, I do. So there's no type that we can put a, a there's no type of person that's going to be more accurate in their connection, uh, in their abilities to connect as a whole being, you know, that happens no matter what type of person you are. That happens through choices, perhaps through some learned behavior, but that happens mostly because you want it, because you really want to get to know who you are, why you're here. So, there's no certain type of person, hmm. 
There's, uh, oh, let's see my other notes. So maybe it's about power and control. Like you really want to, you know, I mean, all this stuff, step into your own power. Um, step into your own power and you'll know everything. Um, you have control over, uh, uh, what do you have control over? Well, you'll have control, right? That's what you have control. When you when you step into your own power, you're in control of your life and where you're going, what you're doing. Hmm. Some people say that if you're in self-will, you're in ego only. I don't believe that. I believe that maybe you're in self-will because you're shy or you're in fear or you have insecurity. I believe that it's not one spectrum or the other and a lot of judgment has been going on. How do you make your choices? And how do you make your choices one choice at a time? How do you make your choices? Do you make your choices based on you? Do you make your choices based on others? Do you make your choices based on your spirit, desire, need, experience? Do you make your choices on your mental? Do you make your choices on your emotional? How would you like to make your choices? That is the gauge. Learning how to make choices, perhaps first in self-will, in order to go deeper and take a closer look and not limit yourself. Don't limit your whole being. I know I don't want to do this because, but let's take a deeper look at this before I fully decide. Invite all that you are, your whole being, to each opportunity, to each experience, and be truthful with that. For me, that is a tool, one of the tools. One of my greatest tools that I use is set me into divine action and motion now. So be it. Set me into divine action and motion now. So be it. My spirit, my soul, my oversoul, all that I am knows that phrase from my being and knows that I'm okay with their choices and decisions. Let's take a deeper look at how we choose to live our life, to love our life, and to be who we truly are. Welcome back to Divine Guidance with Patricia. So today we talk a bit about self-will and divine will. Um, and that there is a difference um, between the two. And a lot of people go up without knowing that difference. Or having it explained, I guess. I, I've known a lot of people around the world who, they kind of refer it to um, a knowing. In, which is an energy. And some people refer it to a gut feeling, but it's deeper than the gut feeling. It's deeper than the thought that went through. It's, um, it's when you know you were supposed to, or you could have, or you would have, even though those are delusional words, but when you know without a doubt that there was an experience calling you, or that you had we're calling to when you know that you've missed out on something or this could have uh, fixed this over here when you know that and that opportunity wasn't taken that is your soul trying to share with you invite me in i'm here to help i'm here to enjoy this experience with you we can work together don't shut your mind out. Don't close your heart up. Let's all work together. It's not a competition. 
so many times. I guess, you know, even today I'm a bit scarred about meditating because in the meditation when I was younger, it was always taught, shut your mind up, close your mind up, shut your mind down. And uh, I usually work with my heart anyway. So um, I enjoy the thoughts of my mind when I'm connecting with my heart. Usually I'm just going out full blast, what I call heart set instead of mindset. And then I have to rationalize it, think it over in my mind. Usually why it's not being understood the way that I'm trying to bring it out and through. Um, so shutting down something to allow something else to come in, it never made any sense to me. Why not have it all? You know, you can't play baseball with one catcher. So why not have it all working together in unity? You know, call it all in. And sometimes when you call all your spiritual teachers in, say, whoa, just a minute. I want one communicator, please, but I want you all working together. And then take it from there. How you make your choice and how you can relate to choices you've made that you can see uh, a better possibility, a best, better scenario could have worked out there. Well, that's your soul and your whole being saying, let's all work together. And if you haven't done it on a regular basis, then it, it, it's something that you will, if you want to and you choose to, uh, open up to. And when you do, you'll be surprised how fast, because it's a natural, a natural, very natural way of living and being in form. Yet it has been so separated and halted. You know, there's a lot of beings on this planet that are in their own self-will. And even over your experience in your life, and you don't need to know them, just know that they're here and it's time for them to leave. But the last thing that they want is for anybody to be connected to their whole being in unity. Doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect every day. You're gonna hear spirit all the time. Doesn't mean any of that. But saying, hey, I'm here and I'm here in many different levels for a divine purpose, wonder what that is. What does my heart have to say with that? How does my mind work in with that? What do some of the tragedies and traumas I've gone through and healed from have to do with that? What are my dreams and goals and aspirations for the future? What do they have to do with that? How is my whole being Gonna work through all of this together, guys. When you search for oneness, and we all do, there's a oneness that starts with you. Negating and navigating through self-will and divine will. Not letting the physical bodies be the boss, but inviting the spirit and the soul, the universe, all the gifts that you carry lifetime after lifetime, all that you are, the memory, invite it all in. Stand in your divine holy grace of who you are. Rationale or reason, feel out. What do I need to remember or fully experience as a whole being this time? I don't want to miss out on that. I don't want to miss out on, I don't know, learning how to make jewelry. 
maybe that was part of my whole being experience. Maybe talking with you, doing this show is part of my whole being experience. And there are days like today when I had put into the database the topic, it was like, whoa, well, that's a tough topic on so many levels. But it worked because my whole soul wanted to talk about it. I didn't just have to go in my mind and what am I going to create and how we going on my heart. My whole soul wanted to come and share this. There's a lot going on on this planet right now. And then through all of us, we're feeling in our own unique ways. So I invite you, maybe in the next seven days, Take a look at some of your choices, how you're making them, how you would like to change making them, and invite your whole being in to make those choices, to open up that pathway of what you truly, honestly, solely, truthfully, respectfully want with your whole being experience. Take some notes. See if it makes some changes. One of the high things that I do for my own being on a whole level is set me into divine action and motion now. Please. I came here. I want to experience. I need to experience my whole being here in order to connect with a true oneness of whole beings connected. Wow, there's a thought. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time on Divine Guidance. And may your journeys be beautiful. May there be divine protection, and divine safety, divine grace, divine healing for all of you. And thank you. I'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to Divine Guidance with Patricia on TransformationTalkRadio.com with me, Patricia McNair. Tune in next time to explore more challenges that can help you achieve your whole being. I know we are all capable of truly being whole, and with a little empowerment, anyone can access an entire universe of knowing that is just waiting to be explored. For more information about me and my services, visit divineguidance.earth. That's divineguidance.earth. See you next time, where together we focus on solutions for the whole being.